fans of intergalactic space swarms and ambush bioconstructs. Thank you very much for joining me for another video looking at the Tyranid Lictor in Citadel Finecast. This follows directly on from the unboxing video I did of this miniature yesterday and that video garnered quite a response and a lot more interest than I was actually expecting. Having done the unboxing and said I thought it was really well cast but I needed to take the model off the sprue to make sure there were no air bubbles hidden anywhere and have a look at it and clean it up. Well I've done the clean up and I thought I'd just do another quick update just to take you through any air bubbles or other sort of imperfections I found with this model. So it can be difficult to spot these on your first unboxing and just looking at the parts in the first instance. Here we've got the kit. There's eight components in total. Well, I guess nine if you count the base, but that's not a fine cast part. These four here are fine. So the two arms, the head and one of the legs. The whole clean up on this was very straightforward, which was a combination of the relative softness of the material and the fact that there was hardly any mould that seemed to take away. So that was very good. There are a handful of air bubbles though. So what we're going to do is just going to quickly go through those and I'll bob some filler in them as we go. So firstly, we've got this leg. Now this is where I spotted the air bubbles when I was unboxing this and you just got these couple here on the corner of the hoof. So I'm just going to use some standard yellow grey milliput. I'm just going to bob a bit of filler in those and then they're done. There was a little bit there. As I said, this is quite an easy little error to fix because of where it is and because of the size of the air bubbles. So that one is really no big deal. For those of you who enjoy playing spot the whiskey. Well, today we're playing with whiskey with no E and there's a bottle lurking there. So uh, a kudos point to the first person who can guess what that is. I've had to rotate the bottle as to not give away the manufacturer. Yeah, this is the first one. Just a little thing to fix that. If you're going to put this model on a base with some texturing, you may not even notice this. I'm just being quite particular fixing this little air bubble here. So that's that done. Apologies about the light if it's not the best because I'm working under artificial light. Right, next looking at the, the first of the striking arms. This had a couple slightly more notable air bubbles, I suppose you'd say now. These are, you can, um, this is gonna be tricky to show. There you go. You can see them here and here and here. So they're kind of on these spines that protrude from the arm. Now you can see how I've left part of the air gate on there and that's because I felt if I removed that it might damage the part, make it harder to repair the air bubbles. So I just left that on, I'll fix the holes or the air bubbles and then once the filler is dry you know do a final clean up and remove that piece of gate. So that was a second little bit of air bubbling I found. Uh, still I guess not particularly dramatic but this time a bit more notable with where it was suppose you could simply cut the spines down a bit if you wanted I mean I guess you may you could argue make an argument to say that fine cast with its you know any susceptibility to bubbles is better suited to things like the Tyranids and other models with with sort of organic form because you have more latitude with your cleanup whereas something like the Tau or space marines, things that have got very sharp, precise lines, Eldar, those air bubbles are gonna have more of an impact. As I say, just a couple more little bits of filling there. Moving on to the second striking arm. These are quite imperceptible. I'm not even sure if they really count as air bubbles. You can see them here. I think they are air bubbling, but I can't be 100% sure. So this one is kind of like a bit of a question mark as to whether or not it's an air bubble. Having looked at the other arm, where this part of the model is smooth, I suspect it is some air bubbling, but it may not be so. I'm perhaps just filling this, maybe slightly, overzealously. that done and then finally the torso and this has probably got the most 
air bubbling evident on it. Now, there's a couple of instances. So the first is on the tail. You can see there's an air bubble there on this spine. And there's another one there and another little teensy weensy one, I think, on here. So there's a few air bubbles that are formed on those spine details. I think the most significant ones on the whole model are these down here on these chitinous plates. You can see there's a couple of air bubbles there, and this one here is actually quite prominent. And there's a bit more loss of detail there, so that's going to take a little bit more reconstruction work. Um, and they were certainly the most significant examples of air bubbling I found on the whole model. So let's just do the same thing and fix these. You could pretend, I mean, I guess you could fill these with super glue as well. A bit more of a, because there's a bit of actual loss of positive relief, I'm using filler. If they're just been, um, if these have been bubbles on a flat surface, then you could have, at this size, you could have just filled it with a bit of glue, zapped it with the accelerant and you'd have been sorted. Seen various sorts of ideas around using fillers. I mean, for me, I mean, there's some cheap alternatives, and I've seen a couple of homebrew uh, recipes for fillers using super glue. And I think it was, was it baking soda. I think yeah, so it was baking soda actually. I saw that someone do that on a Gundam kit, and I actually made a really good job of it. But to be honest, I don't mind spending a few quid on some filler. I think it was baking soda. Yeah. It's basically to give you a matrix for the glue uh, to form a, a solid material with shape. All right, and final couple little bits. Those two down there, the most significant on the model. Air bubbling is always a bane of resin model production. Yeah, I think it's just, uh, I don't, I don't know if there's any way around it. I'm not sure if Prodos's technique with um, how they make their models gets around it a bit more. I suspect it may do. Yep, I think that'll do fine. So there you go. Actually, I think I can just remember one more now. Here we go. It was just this bit here on the arm. I don't even know if it's quite a full air bubble, so I'm just going to try and put a little bit of filler on that. See if you can squeeze it into any void or cavity that there is. There we go. Smooth that over. So there you have it, going on a bubble hunt with the Finecast Lictor by Citadel Miniatures. I don't know, what do I think? Those are pretty minor little bubbles i guess of course it's always best not to have them but in this instance well i think they were fairly easy to fix and put right so anyway that's my experience i'll probably do a bit more content around this someone asked if i could do a build video of it i may do that and then i'll discuss my thoughts on where finecast seems to be once i do a final model review on this so share your thoughts in the comment section as always but other than that i'd just like to say thank you very much for watching i'll speak to you next time and goodbye